Let's stick to the politics beat now for our big story because the primary election is just a few weeks away and that means the gloves are coming off with the top politicians. It is debate time. We held our first debate today with the Portland City Club. They chose the Democratic front runners, former House Speaker Tina Kotek and State Treasurer Tobias Reed. The City Club had their own criteria for choosing the candidates. It was our job to ask the questions. First, we want to focus on the candidates' answers to the subject they and we hear most often about, the homeless crisis. Would you take a more assertive approach into tent camping? A lot of people uh, you want to see that uh, happen to move people into shelters. Would you be more assertive in moving tent camping off the streets? I think we have to be more assertive in the overall approach. But when it comes to having folks move into shelters, we need more homeless navigators on the street. It's in my plan to help people have that connection and trusting relationship to get people into shelter so they can move into permanency. That will take time, but it will also take more people on the streets doing that work. Um, and uh, right now, it's you can't move people unless there are more shelter and more transitional options. We have to create those. And I am so frustrated with the speed at which the city is doing this work, and we can do it differently. Would you support a more assertive approach to tent camping and require people to move off the streets and into shelters? Got a quick, quick answer there. We have to make sure that there are those uh, available transitional uh, shelters and, and opportunities. But once we're there, yes, I think it is it is OK to say you have responsibilities to the other parts of, of community as well. And if you're a governor, would you support the state helping to pay for those shelters? I think we have resources at the state level that we have to look at effective investments in. That's going to make it so much more possible uh, in the rest of the state. And it's not just the Portland problem, by the way, either. Uh, but yes, I think we have to look at all options. Now, the biggest fireworks of the day happened when the candidates were talking about creating housing in Oregon. Reed said he is involved in creating housing as treasurer by issuing state bonds. But Kotek said she's really the only one who's worked on the issue and that she just talked to the president about it. I would just say a little bit malarkey to that about what you have been doing. You haven't been in the arena working on this issue, Tobias. You just simply haven't. And if you, the people who are endorsing me and supporting my race are the folks who have done housing, housing development, shelter work. And with all due respect, you haven't been doing the work at all. Tobias? How's, how's it going? I think he, he's asking how, how, how is the homeless crisis going? Yes. How's but housing people going? I think going? the question well, is how is it going to you? I agree. That's the governor, Tobias, yeah. it is not working. Because as governor, the only way to change that is be in charge of the agencies and have the, the authority to get local government leaders to work differently together. And you know that. So here's the interesting thing about that. You were the most if powerful governor or powerful legislator uh, in Oregon. You could summon those directors to your office at a moment's notice. Every budget uh, is a reflection of your decisions. Who has gavels in the House? Who, uh, what the agendas are in those committees are a reflection of your direction. So to now say that you could only do that you were a lowly legislator without the effective ability to, to deal with that, I don't, I, I, don't think I so. actually didn't say that. Tobias, what I said was, I frankly, that's a simplistic answer there. I created housing committees. I created significant investments over the top of everyone. The Senate president is notorious for saying every time she came to my office, she wanted more money for housing and homelessness. And I'm running for governor because with those investments and with the new laws on the books, we should be doing better. And that is an indictment of the state's inability to work with local leaders to make sure those investments are actually producing outcomes. And I'm tired of it. That's why I'm running for governor. The two candidates actually share similar views on many issues, but Reid is positioning himself as the more moderate Democrat and the outsider who has experience in taking big ideas and actually making them happen. Tina Kotek is positioning herself as someone who knows the state's biggest problems and has already worked to pass legislation to help solve them, that she's in touch with the voters' ideals and knows how to drive the state's ship to a better future. By the way, you should watch the entire debate yourself. We have it posted on the KGW YouTube page and we'll have much more next week on Straight Talk with Laurel Porter. One of the fun parts of debate season for me, I have to say, is watching closely to see who's actually answering these questions and who's not. Politicians love to change questions they don't like. It's sort of like they kind of forget the actual question and instead 
they answer something that they do like. It's called a pivot. It's different than a flip-flop where someone changes their mind. Here they're sort of changing the question, kind of bending it so that they can say what they really want. We did see an example of that today during the debate. First, here's the question. Do you disagree with the vast majority of voters that we are on the wrong track and why or why not? Tina, you'll go first here. Okay, so there you have the question. Is the state on the wrong track? Do you agree with voters that it's on the wrong track? Listen closely to this answer from Tina Kotek. Well, I agree that people are angry and frustrated and I share that frustration. Look, we have been through some very difficult years with the, with the pandemic and you know it's not completely over. It's understandable people are hurting, they're frustrated, their lives have been upended and they're looking for someone to say, where do we go next? So I'm not surprised by those numbers, but I'm running for governor because I am hopeful. And I found this when I was talking to Oregonians in other parts of the state outside the metro area, but also in the metro area. People want to solve problems. They love Oregon. They want Oregon to be successful. So the question was, do you agree with voters that the state's on the wrong track? Everyone knows that you are frustrated, that everyone knows the voters are frustrated. The interesting thing in that question is, do the candidates agree the state is on the wrong track? Now, it might be a tough question for Tina Kotek because she's been part of the leadership until recently. And if she says yes, then it might seem like she's partly to blame. But ignoring the specific question, Kotek answered that people are frustrated and want to solve problems. She did not answer that question. But before we give our award, let's see how Tobias Reed did with the same question. Does he agree with voters that Oregon is on the wrong track? I agree with the, the sentiment that's expressed in that poll. Uh, I don't think we have been on, on the right track for a while. OK, so there you have it. To be fair, probably a lot easier for him to say yes, but he did answer it directly. He agrees the state is not on the right track. Tina Kotek made a pivot and answered the question she wanted to answer. And for that, we are so proud to award Tina Kotek our pivot of the day. Congratulations. By the way, this is the second Pivot of the Day award for Tina Cote. And before you hit send on your angry emails, we're not just having fun with the Democrats. The Republicans do the same thing. They're going to hold their debate on May 3rd. We expect to give them the exact same treatment.